the cruelest dictator in the world, Adolf Hitler. Who isn't familiar with the name Hitler, one of the most powerful figures of his era? Adolf Hitler was born on April 20th, 1889, in Bronau am Inn, a small town in Austria. He was born to Alois Hitler and Clara Hitler. Adolf's father, Alois, held the position of a customs officer with a stable income, typical of most fathers. He even suggested to his son, what if you also become a civil servant? However, Adolf declined, expressing his desire to become a painter. Adolf and Alois often clashed due to Adolf's stubborn nature. He struggled to follow orders, couldn't adhere to strict school rules, despite being acknowledged by his teachers as a highly talented child. However, his laziness, penchant for confrontation, and inability to be controlled led to conflicts. Ultimately, in his final year of school, he skipped his final exams, resulting in the absence of a high school graduation status. In 1903, after Alois's death, Adolf and his friend Kubizek decided to pursue their dream of becoming artists in the city of Vienna. While Kubizek was accepted into the music school in Vienna, Adolf faced rejection twice, both times by the Academy of Fine Arts Vienna. The professors at the academy suggested, you may not be talented in art, perhaps your talent lies in architecture. To study architecture, Adolf needed an abitur or a letter confirming high school graduation, which he lacked due to skipping his final exam. It was a decision he would come to regret. Additionally, in 1908, his mother passed away, leaving him feeling angry, disappointed, and ashamed of himself. In November 1908, he chose to isolate himself in the city of Vienna. This could serve as an introduction to who we know as Adolf Hitler. Historically, Vienna was known for its anti-Jewish sentiments, especially during the Middle Ages. At that time, the mayor strongly opposed the Jewish community, and animosity towards Jews was widespread. They were perceived as cunning, greedy, living exclusively, and were often labeled as a significant threat to rebellions in Europe led by Jews. Adolf, undergoing phases of self-reflection, stress, and disdain for life, began to feel overwhelmed by the hatred surrounding him. His life was chaotic and unclear, lacking goals, with no parents, unachievable dreams, a desire for education like his friends, and the absence of an abitur. He even resorted to living in a homeless shelter, earning meager income as a street artist drawing postcards. However, in 1910, Adolf's life took an unexpected turn when he inherited money from his aunt. He also secured employment at an advertising company. In May 1913, Hitler decided to leave his previous job and relocate to Munich, Germany. In Munich, Adolf's paintings gained more appreciation than in Vienna, allowing him to earn a substantial income as a street artist, surpassing even that of bank employees. This marked the beginning of Adolf's fondness for Germany and feelings of nationalism started to emerge. When World War I erupted, he enlisted in the German army despite lacking military experience. Although unexperienced, Germany needed personnel and Adolf served as a courier for information or goods, a role laden with danger and life-threatening risks. Driven by a strong spirit of nationalism, he proved to be a loyal and courageous soldier, earning two awards, including the Rare Iron Cross First Class. In 1918, Germany faced defeat at the hands of the combined armies of America, Britain, and France. This defeat disillusioned many German citizens, leading to an economic crisis and susceptibility to slander and propaganda. Rebellions among German communists ensued, fueled by effective propaganda that blamed the loss on alleged traitors rather than military defeat. Additionally, in June and July 1919, when the German government granted its citizens the opportunity to express their opinions, Adolf stepped forward declaring, I reject the Jews, 
and I believe they were the masterminds behind the communist rebellion. Due to his genuine belief in this stance, combined with a strong sense of nationalism and effective oratory skills, his speech garnered significant attention from the German public. Many felt that Adolf Hitler's speeches ignited their spirits, stirred their emotions, and cultivated a heightened sense of nationalism. In essence, in just one speech, it seemed as though he positioned himself in a higher stratum. The impact was so profound that he was approached by top military intelligence officials of the German government to become an intelligence operative. He was instructed to infiltrate a new political party known as Deutsche Arbeiter Partei, DAP, considered threatening to the German government. While he joined the party, once in the DAP, he appeared to forget his duty as an intelligence operative as he gained respect and became an integral part of the DAP. By March 1920, he decided to shift gears, no longer content with being an intelligence operative. He wanted to be a genuine part of the DAP party. With Adolf now part of DAP, initially comprising only 50 members, the party suddenly burgeoned to include thousands of believers in Adolf Hitler's tempestuous leadership. In this party, his rank rose rapidly until he eventually became the party leader, leading to the renaming of the DAP party to National Socialistische Deutsche Arbeiter Party, or as we know it, Nazi. While at the helm, Adolf secured military support from an anti-communist figure and financial assistance from German nobility. Under Adolf's leadership, the Nazis became a formidable force. However, the party's success was not sufficient for Adolf, who famously remarked, there is still sky above the sky. In pursuit of his ambitions, Adolf orchestrated a coup to overthrow the Weimar government in 1923, known as the Beer Hall Putsch. Unfortunately, the poorly planned coup led to the arrest of high-ranking Nazi party officials, including Adolf. This event marked a point where Adolf and his party were deemed radical. In February 1924, Adolf faced trial, where he could have been sentenced to death by hanging as a rebel. On the trial day, the central government provided national and international press coverage for the court proceedings. As discussed earlier, Adolf's oratory skills were exceptional, effectively conveying his ideas and his party's ideals to the world. The sympathetic judges preceding over his trial led to a surprisingly lenient sentence of only five years in prison. During his imprisonment, Adolf authored a book titled Mein Kampf, a historical work outlining his ideology and plans for Germany's future. Released after just nine months in March 1925, he swiftly implemented his political strategy, refocusing on rebuilding the Nazi party through propaganda and charismatic speeches to regain public support. Between 1928 and 1930, the world faced a severe economic crisis. Simultaneously, Adolf gained momentum for his political aspirations. In his campaign, he no longer discussed economic strategies or promised specific policies. Instead, he spoke directly to the hearts of the people, proclaiming that, with him, Germany would return to its former glory and be feared and respected by other countries. Du, meine Arbeit für richtig hältst, ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe, dass ich anständig meine Zeit verwendet habe im Dienste meines Volkes. Gib du jetzt deine Stimme ab. Wenn ja, dann tritt für mich ein, so wie ich für dich eingesetzt bin. The Nazi Party secured the second largest number of votes in the September 1930 elections, and in the 1932 elections, it became the largest party in Parliament. Adolf emerged as one of Germany's most respected and prominent politicians. Concerns about the rise of communism among conservative politicians prompted pressure on German President Paul von Hindenburg to appoint Adolf as Prime Minister. Finally, in 1933, Adolf was reluctantly appointed Prime Minister, a decision that marked a turning point. 
Upon his appointment, he declared, there is no other party except the Nazis. On August 2nd, 1934, Paul Hindenburg passed away. And 17 days later, Adolf conducted a referendum or public vote to consolidate the positions of prime minister and president. The result saw 90% of Germans agreeing, officially making Adolf Hitler the absolute leader of Germany. With his newfound power, he sought to restore Germany's glory through military actions in Eastern Europe and Russia. On September 1, 1939, he invaded Poland, marking the beginning of the Second World War, ultimately resulting in the deaths of approximately 60 million people. Among them, six to eight million were Germans themselves. Starting in 1938, Adolf had already initiated targeted attacks on Jews. They faced assaults, confiscation of property, arson of their homes, and prohibition of marriages between Germans and Jews. From 1941 to 1945, Adolf constructed squalid camps with high walls and barbed wire across all regions of Europe controlled by the Nazis. These places, known as ghettos, were utilized for the extermination of Jews, constituting the tragic event we now refer to as the Holocaust. The Holocaust remains the most horrific planned human massacre in history. According to reports, the Nazis annihilated six million Jews, with one million of them being children. In addition to Jews, Adolf orchestrated the elimination of five million other individuals, including Slavs, Romanians, Gypsies, Jehovah's Witnesses, homosexuals, and his political opponents who dared to stand in the way of him and his party. After the World War, which claimed numerous innocent lives and involved planned mass murders that were extremely inhumane, Adolf faced the harsh reality in 1945. Despite his strength, there were moments where underestimating opponents proved unwise and Soviet Union troops entered, successfully seizing control of Berlin. Learning that he was now a fugitive from the Soviet Union Army, on April 30th, 1945, according to historical records, Adolf Hitler and his wife, Eva Braun, decided to end their lives by ingesting cyanide capsules and shooting themselves before their bodies were reportedly taken out for cremation. Has anyone, aside from his subordinates, ordered to burn him, seen his body? No. This is why numerous conspiracy theories suggest he may have just escaped. However, when considering historical records, he indeed took his own life. Nevertheless, it cannot be denied that an individual with such charisma and talent could elevate themselves from homelessness to becoming the supreme leader of a formidable country, even participating in a world war. I understand why many people sympathize with this person. However, he remains a dark and highly controversial figure in world history. That concludes the life story of Adolf Hitler.